Hey guys, this is Jason with Glitch in the System once again. We are continuing on our journey to uh, work on this vending machine app. So basically, the story is uh, I got a request from a manager who I was applying to and he asked me to write test cases for a vending machine. I wanted to go above and beyond to really show my skills so that way I could uh, really push on uh, salary and really make sure that the fit was correct um, based on what I knew how to do and what he was expecting. So in this part is where we're going to actually build the vending machine app. Uh, you can see it right here. It's super simple. There's no CSS at all. Well, there's a few inline uh, snippets of CSS, but that's it. It's pure just HTML and JavaScript. There's no jQuery or anything. It's just uh, as pure as can be. Uh, reason being is because I didn't really need it to be pretty for what I was trying to demonstrate. I was just trying to demonstrate that I knew how to build a, a simple web page, web application, and I went a step afterwards to actually write automated tests against that web application. And uh, so here it is. So we're going to walk through this. Here are the requirements that were given to me. So the vending machine, where's my numbers? The vending machine can dispense Coke, Moxie, Fresca, or Tab soda. So you can see Coke, Moxie, Fresca, or Tab. Uh, let me, there we go. Uh, there is a small display that can print out short messages to the user. So that's this area here. Uh, the machine takes only ones, fives, nickels, dimes, and quarters, so that's all here. And uh, basically, I listed this out. So this is not a value. So this is not one dollar, two dollars, three dollars, or five dollars, ten dollars, whatever. This is how many ones, how many fives, how many nickels that you're putting in, and then we'll calculate the value uh, separately. Okay. And then the last requirement is that. Uh, don't worry about temperature or power or anything mechanical. We're just worried about the functionality of, of the application itself. Okay, so you can see that I kind of pointed out uh, the basics, right? The messaging here, uh, these are the denominations that it takes, these are the types of sodas that we can do. Um, I added an additional thing in here for canceling. Uh, this will basically just uh, clear out that and give a message, and then if you hit it again, it'll reset everything. Um, also, you can see that as I put in numbers here uh, it automatically updates the amount here uh, and then if you hit a soda the amount gets cleared and then it says coke was dispensed uh, nine dollars has been returned to the coin return and uh, basically that's it um, so nothing too complicated but it satisfies all the requirements of this plus it adds uh, some additional features that are pretty common to uh, vending machines and how they should work all right, so I'm going to be using just simple uh, a Chrome browser here, and I'm, I have Visual Studio Code open. Uh, I have one plugin that I will use. It's called Open in Browser, and I also have uh, Prettier installed on here. So if you see me typing code and it reformats after I save it, that's because of Prettier, and the Open in Browser is basically going to automatically open in browser. So uh, let's. Do a new file here so we'll just call this index.html because that's pretty standard and then i'm going to do a right uh actually not right click so i'm going to type html and choose the one that says html5 that'll give us some boilerplate code uh in here we can type in vending machine into the title and then put an h1 in here and say vending machine okay if we save that and i'm going to right click and say open in default browser if you don't have the plugin, uh, you can right click and say reveal and explore and then just double click this, uh, which will open it just the same. It's just a couple extra steps, but um, it's totally up to you how you open it. Uh, but you can see, so here is my completed version and here is the one that I'm working on now. You can see title is vending machine and then we have this H1. So, so far it's matching up right now. All right, so let's just start by writing just the pure HTML code. Uh, for what we need and we'll add the JavaScript afterwards all right so first things first is I need this uh, kind of inputs here so I'm gonna put this in a form and I don't need an action uh, so what I'm gonna do is these uh, labels here I just put them in span tags so span and then what you'll need after that is an input. Uh, type is going to be text. 
it will have a name, uh, it will have an ID, it will have a placeholder, and it will have a value. Okay, and so one, two, three, four, five. So we need five of those. So let's make four copies of this before we start throwing text in there. Okay, so there's five total. All right, so let's start by doing ones and the input. So the name is going to be ones, all lowercase. ID is going to be ones. Close that there. Placeholder is going to be zero. So remember the placeholder value is kind of this like a grayed out shadowy uh, text there and the actual value is the value that's set in there. So we're going to set an initial value of zero and we're going to set a placeholder in there just, just so that it looks pretty when we delete it because otherwise when we delete that zero it's just going to be empty uh, empty box there. Okay so let's do that. Um, so we have ones and let's continue on. We have fives. And remember, this is uh, requires that you put the correct casing. So if it's a lowercase, it needs to be a lowercase. If it's an uppercase, it needs to be an uppercase. Uh, it will be important later. So nickels. And you can go at your own speed if you type faster than I do. So I'm just going to put all those in there right now. Okay, so nickels, uh, dimes. And quarters. save that uh, and you can see that it did reformat a little bit so if you refresh this uh, you can see that ones fives nickels dimes quarters doesn't quite look the same so let me see what I did wrong here Missing something here. What am I missing, guys? So form, span, input. All right, and actually, I'm only just missing some break tags. So. Uh, the BR tag is going to push it down to the next line. So let's see. So after every single input, except for the last one, let's try that and refresh. See if we got all of them. Looks like we missed one. There we go. Okay, that looks better. So that matches up now. Okay, so let's go ahead and create buttons. So it's going to be a button. And then it's going to be uh, just like that. So we'll add a value, and this is going to equal something. Uh, we'll put the value in later. And then ID is going to equal something, and that's fine. So let's create. So we need four plus the cancel, so five. So two, three, four. And then I'll put a BR here, and then five is the cancel button. So let's go ahead and put value. So the first one is going to be Coke. Second one is Moxie. I don't think I've ever had a Moxie soda, but that's what was given in the example. Uh, third one is Fresca. fourth one is tab okay and I'll put cancel here and actually we need to put this value in between the less 
less than or greater than and less than signs here so that way it displays something okay, save and let's refresh have all of our buttons you can see that there's some styling that we need to fix so we can do that now so what I'm going to do is in the form I'm going to hit uh, do a style equals margin dash bottom and 10 px and then also I think there should be one here too so I can just copy the style because I'm going to use the same one and then I'm going to throw that into this uh, tab button and let's refresh see how that looks so that looks like it's all matched up there okay so now all that's left is the text elements there so basically I'm gonna have an h2 and then another h2 for these two elements all right so the first one is going to be total entered and then space dollar sign and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a span in here for for the value okay and then the second one is going to be insert money first period select a soda period save and refresh okay so that looks good um, looks like we have some uh, difference in money here so I can do to zero dot zero zero save and let's see how that looks okay all right there we go so now that all matches up so we can go ahead and uh, create our JavaScript file so let's go ahead and go back here new file I'll call this vending.js okay and we'll hook up our file here so we need to do a script tag make sure this is at the end uh, or else things are not going to work right and then src equals so this is going to be vending.js okay go ahead and save that and to make sure that everything is working correctly with that hookup we can do a console.log of hello or something and then if we inspect go to console refresh you can see it says hello so that means that this is all hooked up correctly and we can delete that and if you refresh that, you can see message is gone. Okay, so this is ready. I'm gonna leave the index.html file open because I will likely have to make some edits to this as I update my JavaScript file. Uh, I don't need the requirements anymore because everything that pretty much needs to be done has been done just, just through the HTML itself. Uh, we just need to build in some functionality uh, with the JavaScript. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to get the total value of the money that people are putting into this machine. Uh, so that way we can basically do everything else because this is this is the key to 90% uh, of this app is getting the value of uh, getting the value of the money that people are putting in. So I'm going to go ahead and create some some variables here. So I'm going to create a variable called uh, money inserted and then this is going to equal to zero and let's go ahead and create another one let's create variable change and this is going to equal to zero I'm not going to use all these at the moment but they will be uh, needed in the future so let's go ahead and do that um, so let's do uh, a constant so we're gonna call this uh, currency ones and then this is going to equal to actually one this is equal to one so basically I'm setting the value of what this field is so uh, what I'm going to do later is I'm going to do uh, however many numbers that they put in there so if a user put five in there then we're going to do five times this value so five times one and then if they put five here then it's going to be five times five and then nickel five times 0.05 okay so let's just set this continue setting this up so currency uh, five equals five const currency let's see nickel 
equals 0 0.05, and then const currency uh, dime equals to 0 0.1, and then const currency quarter is going to equal to 0 0.25. Okay, so that's the variables that we need. Uh, we're going to create a function here. So it's called function. It's going to be called get total. Okay, and then no space there. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to create some more variables. So this is going to be var. So this is going to be I'm going to call this similar to the other one. So currency underscore one, but I'm going to make it ones. And then this is going to be equal to uh, document dot get element by ID and then I know the ID of this ones field is ones Oops. and then we want the value okay so remember that when you're getting the value from a text field it's going to come back as a string and you can't do math on a string so we need to convert this to a number. So if you wrap this in a number like this, so put a capital N for number and then put the parentheses around this whole thing, this will be uh, saved as a number, okay? So I'm gonna actually just copy this four more times and then just update it. So ones, next one is fives, next one is nickels, Next one is dimes. And then followed by quarters. Okay, save all that. Okay, so now that is gonna save that. And we can actually test this out. So what we can do is we can do a console.log um, Let's actually do it in here. Let's do console.log of, let's do currency dimes. Okay, it doesn't really matter. And then if we call the get total method there, save it, and we need to make an update to our files here. So let's see, I did dimes. So I'm gonna set the value to 10, save it. And if I refresh this, so it says 10 there, and you can see 10 was printed out there. So if I change this to 100, you should see that it's 100 and 100. So um, that proves that this method is working or this function is working. So that's good. I can get rid of all that now. OK, so what we're going to do here is we're going to check to see if there's a value in here that is not a 0, that is greater than 0, uh, and do some math on it. Um, let me go back here and fix this real quick, back to 0. Okay, so pretty simple. So it's just a basic if statement. So if currency ones is greater than zero, so if the value that's in the currency ones is greater than zero, then we're going to do currency ones equals to currency ones times currency one. Okay, so remember currency ones is the value that's inside of here, currency one is this constant for how much that denomination is worth. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and copy this and do an edit since it's faster that way. So one, two, three, four. So the next one is going to be fives. So just do a quick copy paste and make sure that your last one is a singular, not a plural. So that looks good. Uh, let's see. And we can also, let's just do a console.log of get total. Okay, let's save that and let's put this back to 10 again. All right, so let's go ahead and refresh. 
Let's see, undefined. We're not returning anything yet, so we need to fix that first. So let's see, we're going to create another variable. Let's call this uh, total paid equals zero. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to take this total paid, it's going to equal, and then we're going to basically add all these values together. So currency one plus currency fives plus currency nickels plus dimes plus quarters. Okay, all right, save that. And we're going to return uh, total paid. And we need to do two fixed. So I want it to have uh, two decimal points afterwards. So two fixed will, and with the number two in there, will give us that. Uh, we can go ahead and refresh this. And you can see now it's $1. So we have 10 dimes, 10 times 10 cents is a dollar. We can make that. 100 dimes and refresh it and you can see that turns into ten dollars so that looks like that's working all right i'm going to set that back to zero i can delete this okay so we have the total um let's refresh this uh, next thing i want to do is i want to make sure that uh, see when i type in a number here this is not updating but when i do it over here this is updating the value as i type so we can do that now. Uh, let's create another function here. We're going to call this tally. And then this is just going to be uh, money inserted equals to get total. Okay. And then what we're going to do is the document dot get element by ID. And we need to get an ID for this. So inside of that first span tag, we're going to put ID equals to paid. Okay, so our ID here is going to be paid. And then dot inner HTML. And then this is going to be equal to money inserted. All right, so let's see. Okay, so that will change the text. But first, we need to update our. Uh, stuff here so after the value on each one of these inputs we need to do uh, an on input and then that's going to call tally okay so after somebody enters in text into each field that will uh, trigger that function to be called all right so let's refresh this and let's try this out so one two three, four, and five. Okay, so that looks good. Awesome. All right, so let's move on. Uh, I want this, uh, I need this cancel button to do stuff. So the two things that it needs to do is it needs to clear out all the values here and then it needs to clear uh, to reset the tally basically. So let's do the clear tally first since uh, we're already kind of on that. Uh, what I can do is I can just copy this function here and then I'm going to change, uh, oops, copy the whole function and we're going to call this clear tally and instead of money inserted equals get total, we're going to make money inserted equals to zero. All right. And we can save that um, and we need to basically call this on on our cancel button so on our cancel button we'll do an on click and then that'll equal to a clear tally okay just like that so on click all right so let's try this out 
So make sure everything is saved. I'm going to put some values in here and hit cancel. And you can see a clear tally went back to zero, uh, but we haven't done this uh, form part yet. So that's good. All right, so let's, let's clear the fields next. So let's create a function called clear form. And then this is going to equal, I'm uh, gonna do document dot get element by ID. And then we'll put the ID in a second. And then dot value. And then this is gonna equal to zero. So basically I'm just gonna reset the value back to zero for each one of those items there. So let's make five copies of that. So we want ones fives, nickels, dimes, and quarters. Let's save that. Um, we're going to change this. So instead of clear tally, we're going to create another function. And this is going to be called cancel. And basically what this is going to do is this is going to clear form and clear tally. Okay, so we can uh, call both of those there. So I'll just put cancel there. So let's refresh this. So let's put some numbers in here and cancel. All right, so everything's set back to zero and this tally is set back to zero also. Okay, so I'm gonna update the cancel method that we created a little bit more because when I do the cancel here it says transaction canceled the amount that you entered has been returned to the coin return uh, so basically I want to make that functionality and then if I hit cancel again then it will go back to the original messaging okay so I am going to go ahead and create a variable at the top here so, I guess I have to put var up there Okay, so let's see, var message. So msg equals to an empty string. So this will be my message that I'm gonna stick in there. And then down in this cancel, I'm going to first of all call get total so that the uh, value is set. basically I want total paid to get set so get total will we'll make sure that happens and then if total paid is greater than zero then the message will equal to transaction canceled and plus uh, Let's see. So transaction canceled. So five dollars. So we need to put the money in here. So we'll put total paid dot uh, to fixed two plus and space has been returned. Period. Okay. So if that happens, then that's what that is. And then if not, let's see. And then at that point, actually, we want to clear the form. So if the total paid is greater than zero, then we'll do the clear form, clear tally. Uh, but if not, so else if total paid equals to zero, then message is going to equal the original message which was insert money first select a soda okay All right so I have the messages there but I need to actually update this uh, text there so what I need to do is on this h2 for the second h2 I need to do ID equals to message save that and I'm going to go back over to my 
top of here. Oops, this should be blank, not that. So, and then we'll do a var, and then we'll call this message element equals to document dot get element by ID, and then this is going to be message. We can save that, and then what we're going to do is so if after this clearing of the tally, we need the message element dot inner HTML, and then that's going to equal to a message. Okay. So it's going to update to whatever message is set up here. And I'll just copy this and put this down here. Okay. So basically, we'll have one of two messages. All right. So let's refresh. And let's try this out. So if I put a one in here and hit cancel, it clears out everything. It says transaction cancel. One dollar has been returned. And if I put in more money here, so six fifteen, so six fifteen has been returned. Okay, and if I can cancel again, so right now everything is zeroed out, then it says insert money first, select a soda. So that's all good. Okay, so we're coming close to the end. We're almost done here. Let's create a couple more variables up here. So I'm going to create an array of sodas. So I'm going to call this sodas, and then this is going to equal to Coke, Moxie. Fresca and tab. Okay, and also I'm going to create a price for the soda, so it's going to be const price equals to 1.3, uh, so it's a dollar thirty cents for a soda. A little expensive, but it's all good. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do actually is I'm going to calculate the change due. Uh, because the change is going to drive what the interaction is. So if I give exact change, then it would be one message. If I give too much change, too much money, and there's a change due, then that'll be another message. And if I don't give enough money, then that'll be another message. So we're going to need to calculate the change in order to do so. So let's create a function and call this calculate change. Okay, and I'm just gonna create var uh, temp change, and then this is gonna equal to zero. So we're gonna do if, and then get total is not equal to zero. So basically if uh, no money is entered in, or if something, some money was entered in, then we're gonna return uh, temp change equals to get total so we're going to get the value of how much they entered in minus price so the, how much they put in minus the price and then dot to fixed okay and then if if it's not the case then we're just going to return temp change dot to fixed which is just going to be uh, no money okay Alright, so now let's create our final function here. So let's create function dispense soda. Okay, and there we go. So what I'm going to do is this is going to take a soda uh, because uh, that's why we created this soda array is because I'm going to say uh, Moxie has disp been dispensed. Fres or Fresca. Uh, Hold on. Fresca has been dispensed. So this is going to drive that messaging there. So that's what the soda uh, parameter is there. Um, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to set message uh, element dot inner HTML equals to nothing. So I'm just going to uh, kind of reset it, reset the message that shows up here. Uh, the user will never see it because it's going to happen too quick. And then I'm going to set change equal to zero just to start with. Okay, just to make sure that there's no memory issues. All right, and then we're going to do a var selected soda is going to equal to sodas um, soda. Okay, so basically whatever they selected. And in order for that to work, I need to update my buttons here. So what I need to do is on click. 
and I'm gonna call it this dispense soda and then uh, this is gonna be a zero because it's the first item in there so make sure this is in the correct order so coke moxie fresco tab Let's see coke moxie fresco tab so that looks correct and I can just copy this here and just paste along and just make sure you update this so one two and three okay so let's see that's all set okay and then after I do that I'm gonna do change is going to equal to calculate change so we're gonna get the that new value of the change so basically these two things are just resetting any messaging or any value in the change and then we're gonna set the the name of the soda that they selected based on what they clicked on and then also get the value of the change based on what they entered in okay so we're gonna have some if statements so if change is less than zero then what we're gonna do is first have a message that's gonna equal to uh, you did not pay enough dollar and we can do a plus sign here so it's gonna say change has been returned to the coin return okay so let's see let's let's show that here so it's clear so I put a one there and I type in fresca and it says you did not pay enough 25 cents so if you don't pay enough basically they're just gonna re refund all your money and it's gonna start you over again so uh, obviously we need to do a few things to ours so uh, there's the messaging uh, we're gonna set total paid to equal to zero we're gonna set change equal to zero just to kind of like reset everything we're gonna do clear form we're gonna do clear tally okay we can save that and let's try this so if we refresh and if I type in one quarter and type in hit moxie uh, looks like something happened oh, I need to set the value to the message so message l dot inner HTML equals to MSG let's try this again refresh one okay you did not pay enough uh, 145 has been returned so let's take a look at this so you did not pay enough 25 cents looks like we have some issue here so Let's take a look at what's going on here. So let's see, one, oops, one, so that is a quarter. And now it says minus 105. All right, and it looks like I made a mistake here. So it says change here, but we also actually want total pay dot uh, two fixed, two. And let's refresh that, let's try again. So a quarter, there we go. Dime, nickel, so that looks good. Okay, so that's better. So that's the first condition. All right, let's work on the second one. So else if, let's see, change is greater than zero, so that means you paid too much, then the message is going to equal to, uh, we're gonna do this, Selected soda plus has been dispensed. So you will get your soda. And then you have to get your change back. So it's going to be change has been returned to the coin return okay so that's good and then after that we're gonna have to do all this again so total pay change clear form and message so we can just copy that paste that in there 
Okay, let's give that a go. So let's put a five in there and let's do moxie, so 370. So five minus 130 equals 370, so that looks good. Let's do some other denominations here. So 605 and 475 sounds about right. Okay, so that's good. So that's that condition is done. And then let's do another one. So if, else if total paid equals to zero. So this is if they tr try to click the button and nothing uh, was entered. So we're just going to do a message equals to, and then this is just going to say, please pay before selecting a soda. OK. And then since there's nothing to clear out, all we have to do is message element dot enter HTML equals to message. OK. So let's refresh this tab, please play before selecting a soda, cancel tab, cancel tab, all right, so that's awesome, and then one final one, so we're going to do else if uh, change equals zero, so if, if the change that was calculated out um, is zero, so they paid the exact amount, then message is going to equal to selected soda plus has been dispensed. So they're not getting any change this time. And we need to get all this once again. So total paid, change, clear form, clear tally, and updating the message. So just like that, save. So let's try this out. So uh, refresh one more time. So one dollar and one nickel and one quarter it equals 130. And if I hit Fresca, and it says Fresca has been dispensed. Okay. So it looks like all of our conditions are met and our app is working. And that's basically it. Um, feel free to go ahead and add styling to this. If you wanted to make, make it look prettier, you can just add some color, like some simple coloring or some borders. Uh, some You can do some bootstrap in here if you wanna make it look, look nicer um, also. But this is basically, done. It's a functioning, simple vending machine app that kind of gets the point across. And uh, we will be working on automating this in a couple different ways in the next couple of videos.